And there aren't too many batsmen that can well, keep Chain worn out, let alone score runs off him. We're going to analyse a little bit of the way Brian Lara went about things today. First up in the crease, he was looking to play with the spin, looking to be positive straight away. I mean, that's as much as anything here, Lara's just defending, isn't he? He's just playing with the spin, putting the pressure back on Warren. It causes Warren and Ponting to have a little bit of a conversation. How are we going to play about it? This is Lara again, working the ball to the leg side. Yes, he could have picked up a run, but as much as anything, that's a defensive shot as well. Ponting talking to Warren about how they're going to cope with him. Now, talk us through the genius of this shot in particular and the footwork, Stuart. Well, Ricky and uh, Shane were talking about Brian Lara trying to work everything the off, uh, on side, and Warren's obviously said I'm going to bowl a lot wider off stump, try and hit the foot holes, and that's where Lara is frees his arms up, he gets to the pitch of the ball, he's very quick on his feet, Brian, mm. whether he's coming forward or going back. And those two shots, the first one, he danced down, advanced down uh, by a yard or two, mm. met the ball in the half volley. Mm. It doesn't matter how much the ball's spinning, if you get mm. on the half volley, you can get you know, a good bat on it, go mm. for four. And that last shot, rock back. Way, way back in his crease, had plenty mm. of time to adjust to the spin and just punch it through the gap as well. The precision of the footwork is the key here in this shot from Brian Lara. The precision of the footwork and the balance. Sees the ball goes up in the air. Look how still his head is, but how quick his feet move. Right to the pitch of the ball. Bang. Hitting the ball right on the top of the bounce. A full follow through from Brian Lara there. That's an outstanding shot. And it's all very well saying, let's be positive. Let's try and put Shane Warne off his, off his line, off his length. You've got to know which way it's going. Lara reads him, doesn't he? Lara has been probably, along with Tendulkar, the t th those two blokes haven't really been tied down by Warren in their careers when they've come head to head. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk to Warney about it, and those are the two guys who he, he really hate, doesn't like bowling at. Mm -hmm. And there's not too many blokes in the world that Shane mm -hmm. Warren doesn't like bowling at. Those two guys, well, I've seen Lara just you know, hit Warren out of the ground for fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Tendulkar the same in India mm -hmm. on pitches that are, are ten times worse than that one. Mm -hmm. So it, it does, it, when you do read a spinner and mm. you, you know which way the ball's going to spin, mm. it makes it a lot easier to play the ball. But, you know, it, it's, it's just something in their mind. <laughs> They've got it. Other batsmen would love to have it. But, you know, not everyone's born with that gift. Let's put it into context how hard it is to face Shane Warne. Darren Powell was the uh, recipient of a rough spinning leg break which went behind his legs. Now he's a tail ender. He's not out there to deal with the wiles of Shane Warne and score runs, but look at the turn, look at Hawkeye suggesting where the, the ball would have gone if it hadn't turned, look how much spin from round the legs from Powell, but even Sarwan, who averages 40 in test cricket, really not having an idea of how to kick that out. Now, how do you play this? You're a right hand. I mean, well, Lara obviously can get his pad in the way it's coming back at him, but how does a right hander play this? It's obviously easier for a left hander. Uh, <laughs> <not playing so. laughs> uh, but the ball spinning back in is, is generally easier to play than the ball spinning away from the bat. Someone there has tried to kick that. He's tried mm. to just let it hit because it's pitched outside leg stump. He's tried to kick it with his front pad. Mm. But the pitch has played its part as well. It's the natural variation that mm. Shane Warne has is the, the cricket pitch itself. Mm. Some spin massively. Mm. Some don't spin much at all. Uh, and some say it is Shane Warne controlling that, but... Nine times, well, 90% of the time, it's the, it's the pitch doing it. Um, but someone's just tried to kick it. He's got it slightly wrong. It's only taken the top of off stump. Yeah, the point with Lara being left-handed, as we saw in the opening shots when we were analysing his, the way he played chain Warne, hitting the ball to the leg side is as much a defensive thing. He knows the ball's going to hit him on the pad. If he's outside the line, he can't be out. LBW, he's not going to be bowled. So it's uh, as much a, a defensive stroke as something uh, he's trying to score runs off. Um, even the greatest bowlers, however, need fielders to hold their catches. Now, you can't really say that Warne and Ponting outthought Lara here, but Matthew Hayden produced a little bit of genius. Warne round the wicket into the rough, him and Ponting, many discussions about that, but talk us through this, this is quite outstanding. Yeah, big Hados, he, he's a massive bloke too, and to get, a, get his frame moving that quickly, react as quick as he did, mm. stay as low, mm. now that's, that's the v natural variation from the pitch I'm talking about, that was a leg spinner, yeah. and they've been nearly hitting off stump from that far wide of off stump, that didn't spin back as much, caught the edge. Leading wicket takers in Test match cricket in 2005, headed convincingly by Shane Warne. 83 wickets from 13 Tests, averaging 29, a best of six for 46. Freddie Flintoff in second place, same amount of Tests, 67 wickets. McGrath's there with 57.